OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, so we're doing slides, right? We're dusting them off. We're going to use them for other things. You can, do, you can use slides for lots of other things. And we've covered this in the last session. I'm not going to recover everything that I did last time. I am going to do a quick little rundown, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, shout out to, I believe, Jean Damon. Um, she nudged my needle over, and I took the uh, Google Cloud certification. <laughs> and, and by the, the skin of my teeth, I, I got it. So, Gene, if you're in the house, thank you very much for that nudge. Now, onto this deck. Uh, this, again, is an ebook and it has a table of contents. Okay, so as you select items in the table of contents, it will take you directly to that page. And then on the page that you get to, there will be a little TOC button that will take you back to the TOC. So, let me show you the TOC. By the way, TOC stands for Table of Contents. Okay. If you want, if you know all this ideas for use, but hey, you want to know how to create a new slide in Drive, then you would click on this link. Now I have to click twice because I'm the owner. You won't have to do this, but you click on the link and it takes you to that slide. Boom, 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 yay, right? And here's that little TOC button I was talking about. So this will get you back to the table of contents. Uh, there is now, two pages of table of contents. So again, if you click on a link and then select the TOC, it will take you back to that table of contents. Ooh, messed up. There we go. It should have taken you here to uh, slide six. So I'll fix that. So again, that's the great thing about this ebook is that it will be updated in time. Okay. Or as, wait, no. Did I say that wrong? Yeah, it'll be updated and it'll be live for you if you use this link. Um, no, you will not be able to make a copy of this slide deck, but you will be able to get a PDF. There's a PDF um, page and July 7th is where it's stuck in time right now. At the end of today's session, I'm gonna be fixing that TOC button and then I'll update it. I might be adding a few things as well. Okay, so that explains this handout. Now, today, I'm going to move this down because the stupid Zoom controls are always in the way. Uh, remember this, for those of you that were last here last week, we did, uh, we inserted an image and I selected space. Um, and because I was adding, I had played some music, I went ahead and added a disco ball. I put that over the moon shape that was there. So I kind of added a few little things in here. So this is the, if you want to follow along, Let's, ha let's start having some fun here. So this was what we started or what, I, what we did last week. And just to, to nudge everyone's needle over and remind them what we did. Oh, did I? Yeah, here we go. Here's what we did last week. Okay. Thank you, Jean. You are here. Yeah. It was, well, we, we can talk about that maybe. <laughs> that was a mind blower. <laughs> um, so this is what we did last week. We uh, discussed ways to create a new deck, lots of different ways. You can use the waffle, you can use the drive, you can go to slides.google.com, lots of different things, right? Um, when you create a slide, they've got templates, or when you go to slides.google.com, there's templates there that you can use, right? Um, you can, they've got flashcards, they've got presentations, they've got quote unquote lesson plans. There's lots of templates. So you could start a slide that way as well by using one of their templates. Why recreate the wheel? The wheel's already there. Themes. We went over how to make a theme um, appear, which, does anybody remember? You would go to the word theme up at the top of your slides deck. Uh, by the way, if you're following along, open a slides deck. Open the one that you created last Tuesday or create a new one. Doesn't matter, but create a slides deck, okay? So we can add a theme or you could you could choose not to have a theme as well, but that's how you add a theme. You just click on a white area somewhere. Don't have anything selected. Because if I select this puppy right here, I don't see theme, do I? All right, I have to click in the white or blank area of my slide and then I see the word theme. 
and then it, they all appear over to the right hand side. All right? Remember that? Okay, explore. We use the explore tool down in the bottom right hand corner. That will turn gold if Google has an idea. If it's gray, it still has ideas, but maybe they're not as uh, gold. <laughs> All right, they're not as golden. So um, use that explore tool if, if you really, you don't like the themes you see, or um, you, you want a little more kickapoo joy juice, you wanna add like space and have them come up with, with, a, uh, with a theme for you. We also went over adding shapes, adding images, cropping and masking. So we covered a lot last go around. This go around, this is what I'd like to go over. Uh, we've, we've discussed themes. Um, it's really important that you understand if you're going to get in deep and dirty um, and create a lot of different layouts or a lot of different types of slides, you need to know how to manipulate the master slide and the layout slide. Okay, so we're going to discuss that. I hope to be able to walk everyone through creating a flashcard set or some other kind of um, uh, deck. I'm going to call it a deck. It's not a presentation. It's a deck. Okay. <laughs> and then we're going to hopefully have also some time to do a little more on shapes. Okay. So that's what I hope to cover today. So while we're here, everyone should have, if you're following along, you should have a, uh, a layout or shoot, wrong word, a slides. Okay. So I'm going to create a new one. And the way I create a new one is usually I just do slides.new. Slide, you have to spell it right, slides.new. There we go. I'm gonna get my blank going. I'm already signed in, so Google knows, oh, you want a new slides? Sure, no problem. And when you do that, it automatically opens the themes for you. I'm going to title this, OTAN delete. Okay, I always put delete on it when I know I'm going to delete something. Uh, it may, just makes it easier to find. All right, and if you're following along, I just want you to choose a theme. If you already have a theme um, in your slides deck, great. Then just hang tight. Okay, so just scroll down, find a theme. It doesn't matter what it is. Boom. There, I now have a theme added to my slides deck. And then I'm going to, because I like a lot of real estate, so next to the word themes on the right hand side, I've got this X, I'm going to click that, boom, I get more real estate. And I start putting in my title, right, OTAN, delete. And then it dawns on me, you know, I really don't like this font, this font Merriweather. It came with a theme. I don't like it. To me, it's, it's got too much, uh, it's, it's a serif font, S-E-R-I-F, okay. I don't like serif fonts. I like sans serif. So I could select the text and change it. I'd go up to Merriweather up here at the top of my, uh, my toolbar, click on it, find the font that I want, and then it would change. And then I would have to do that for every single slide that I create. There's a much easier way. Wouldn't it be great if I could just change it once and it just went, change it on everything? That would be so cool, wouldn't it? You can do that. There's two ways to get there. Number one, you could go to view and then you could go to master. The second way is to go to slide and then, where'd they put it? Edit master. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. Where is the font icon? There's not really an icon, Jennifer. When I click on text, when I, when I have my cursor, you can see my cursor blinking within a text bar, I get the option up at the top of my, um, my GUI interface here, underneath the menu bars, okay, all of these words, file, edit, view, that's the menus, okay, and each one of these little graphics underneath the menu bar um, are actually in the menus. <laughs> They're just making it easier for you, okay? So I see Merriweather. You might see Arial. You might see Roboto. You might see, I, I forget one of their standards, um, Times is another one. But you have to select a text box. If you don't select a text box, you don't see the font options. 
See, I don't see it on mine. So when I select some text or I click on the text box, then I see all of the font options. That's very important to remember on anything you do with Google Slides. You're not going to see specific options unless you click on something. If you want to see image options, you have to select an image. You want to see text, you want to see the font size, you want to see bold, italic, underline, you have to select an, uh, um, a text. Okay? All right, so now we're going to change this text on the entire theme, on the entire slides deck. We're going to make it our own. Okay? Again, two ways to do that. We go to View, Master, or Slide, Edit, Master. Either way, I don't care. Do it. I clicked and highlighted text. Still no font icon on toolbar. Jennifer, you're, you're not looking for a font icon. You're looking for the, the name of the text. Um, let me go back. So if you don't see, yeah, you're going to see it that way too. So click in the text, look up at the top of your screen. If you see a number like 36 and then there's a minus next to it, to the left, you should see your font face right next to that. If you don't, it could mean that you have your toolbar minimized um, and I can't help you. <laughs> uh, the only thing I could think of to do at this point would be to um, close the slide deck and then uh, open up a new one. Do Google slide presentations embed in Moodle or do we just link? Oh, what a good question. And we have someone here that can answer you. Ha ha ha. Uh, Marjorie, could you come on mute, unmute and, and answer that? I guess. <laughs> Thank hey you. everyone. Um, Google slide presentations, you would have to embed them. Um, actually, I'm sorry, you would link them. Okay. Um, yeah. So Marjorie, can you, if there was a way to get an embed code, would that be possible or do you know? Most definitely. Okay. Yeah, you can. Okay, so we might be able to go over that, John. All right, Jennifer, unminimizing a toolbar, again, it, it's a little involved, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is to stop or um, close that slides deck and hopefully open up a new one. And the only thing I can think of right now for you is to look underneath your avatar, which is over to the right of the, uh, the share button, and you, we have a control shift F, or there's a little arrow so that might help you. Other than that, um, Sandra, you had to click on the arrow in the upper right-hand corner to show the menus. Yeah, that's this guy right here. Okay, so I'm, I'm circling around it. And I know my screen is small for you, but try that. All right, here we go. I'm going to go to View, and then I'm going to Master. Again, remember, there's two ways. View, Master, or Slide, Edit, Master. When you get there, when you get here, I should say, let's look at this for a minute. Up at the top of the screen, you're going to see the word, um, and underneath the name of your theme, my theme is called Paradigm, all right? Your theme is probably going to be named something unless you followed along, all right? It doesn't matter. This is the name of the theme. It's called Paradigm, okay? Um, underneath that, you're going to see the word master, okay? The master slide, I want you to think of the master as the owner. Okay, yes, you're the owner, but the master is the slide owner. Okay, the master is what uh, tells everybody else what to do, right? Kind of like a boss, the, the owner of the organization, the owner of the franchise, <laughs> the slides franchise, okay? The owner tells the manager, okay, I want you to have chocolate shakes on your menu. I don't know why I went to a food theme, but I did. Uh, so the manager says, okay, chocolate shakes. All right, fine. Okay. So the owner gets to decide what happens to the franchise. Okay. All right. Now on your master slide, make sure you have master selected. There's really a, well, yeah, there's a lot of things you can change here. Number one, is the font. So click the font box that's the title. 
click the title, all right, or double click within the title, okay? Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I select the box, okay? I know that I have the box selected because I have squares all around it. Once you select a box, you can go up to the font face. I see Meriwether, you might see something different, and I'm going to select uh, oxygen. We can all use a little oxygen, right? All right, now if you don't see oxygen, don't worry about it. It just means that you don't have that font. Choose something else, something that you like. Or if you like what's there already, leave it. It's okay. Um, while the box is selected, <clears throat> I want to make my title bold. So with the box selected, I've already changed the font face. I'm going to select the letter B up here, bold. You can also use your, your shortcut keys. Control B does the same thing. And now my title on the master is bold. All right, now I'm going to try and do something. I need everyone to look over here, over at the Zoom. I've just made my screen, the, the master, um, kind of big. Now I've selected this text box. I'm going to deselect the bold. I want you to look. I can't make it any bigger. I wish I could. I want you to look right here where it, underneath the, the word layouts. You see each one of these layouts is listed, but I want you to look really close and see if you can see that right there and what happens when I hit the B. Here we go. That was bold and now it's not. With every slide, every title became bold when I hit the B and it unbolded when I deselect it. So again, the master is telling all of the other layouts, all of the other managers what to do. That's very important. You need to understand the levels. The master is at the top level. The manager can do things as well, okay? And then when we get to the slide, that, that can change as well, all right? So the master slide is used by all of the other layouts. If I wanted my background, right now it's kind of a, a grayish color, I don't like that. I want all of my slides, every one of them, to have a, a more, um, a more, a more, a more better color, okay? <laughs> so I'm just making sure that this layout is selected, master is selected, okay? And then I'm gonna go to the word background. I don't have any text selected, so I see the word background. I'm gonna click that, and it's gonna ask me, okay, what color do you want? And I see the word color, and then I see a little arrow on the far right hand side. So that's one I'm going to click on. And then I get all my colors, right? Um, this is kind of a bluish theme. So I'm going to make it my background blue and I'm going to hit done. Now look at the master has a light blue and then every layout that was following the master is also a light blue. Okay. Making sense. Is the first slide automatically the master slide? Absolutely, and you cannot move it, by the way. You cannot move the slides and the order that they appear in on your master view, okay? Just on the master view. When we get back to the, we're not in the slides deck per se. We're in the master view of the slides deck, okay? I'm gonna do that step one more time, you bet. So let's say I've, I've, I've noticed that the, the most of the slides, have this blue color, okay, instead of the gray. They have this, and I really don't like this blue color. So I'm going to just select, make sure I've got this slide selected, this master slide. I'm going to go to the word background, okay. Now, if your background is white, you're not going to see anything other than this little arrow. If you've already changed your background, you're going to see the color that it is. It's a little circle, okay. If it's white, you don't see that little circle because it's white. All right, kind of silly that they don't outline it a little bit, but they don't. So choose the arrow next to the word color on the far right, all right, and then select a color that you can live with. And then every slide that follows the master will be that background color, all right? 
every slide that follows the master on the text box. Uh, I just selected the, not the title box, but the text box. I selected the title or text box and I see that it's Roboto. I don't like Roboto or maybe I do, um, but I want to make it Arial. Okay, and not only that, but I think that um, right now the point size is 14 points. I don't want it to be 14. I want it to be 18 for the entire box. Okay, you can also go in and it says uh, right now you've got what the bulleted items would look like. So um, on every slide that follows the master, right now every slide that follows the master will be Arial 18. What if I want the second level to be Arial 16? I can do that. Maybe I want the third level to be 14. I can do that. Right? You can select whether you see the number on the font and select it, or you can use the plus and the minus signs on either side. So this master is telling the managers what to do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's the only way I can figure out how to describe it that makes sense. There's a hierarchy involved. So the master is telling all of the, the managers what to do. Now let's go to one of the managers. All right. I'm going to go to the, my first manager right here. When I select it, it has a blue outline around it. All right. And what do the levels correspond to? It just, it's a way to figure out what is going to be done on the layouts when you change your masters, Sandra. It's just a way to figure out the master is the boss, the layout, the layout master is a manager, and then you have your own slides. When you're adding your own slides, they have, um, they have rights too, okay? They can, they can be changed, they can be added to, they can be um, anything, you can do anything you want to them, just like you can do anything to the layouts. So I'm back to layout. Um, so underneath master, I've got all of my layouts. Okay, all of the layouts that are with this theme. Um, I'm going to, usually on most of the themes that Google gives you, they have this one that has a line, um, a banner that goes across. So I'm going to select that. Okay, so I've got this big banner that goes across and there's two text boxes. Okay, so and the name of it, if I go to the, um, the right above this layout, I see editing paradigm, that's the name of my theme, paradigm, title and two columns. I can also see that it's used by zero slides. Does everyone see that? Does anybody not see that, I should say? If you don't see that, please type it in the chat. Is there live closed captioning in Google Slides? Absolutely, John, I'll show you that, I'll show that to you, okay? So editing paradigm, title in two columns. Here we go. You're gonna go, you're gonna look, go to, <laughs> I want you to look within your layouts, you're in master view, right? So up at the top, you'll see the word master. Okay, and then we've got the word layouts. Now you have to be in the master view in order to see this. So you're going to scroll down. And if you don't see two columns, that's okay. All right, I, what I want to show you is what you can do to this layout. All right, you can choose any layout. Um, there, there's usually with a Google theme, there is a title in two columns master or layout master. So if you just see one that has just a banner going across with no title slides, that's fine too. Use that. Okay. All right. Now, here is this layout. All right. This is a layout master. This is a manager. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I like real estate. I don't like this big banner. I want more, more space for words more space for words. This is not controlled by the master. The master has no say on whether or not there's a banner on the slide, but the, the layout master has that say. I hope I'm, that's making sense. So on this layout, if I, if I create a slide and I go, oh man, that's, that's, there's not enough room for my text. I wonder if I could make the banner smaller. 
Yes, you can by going to view master or slide edit master. Okay, and then you find the layout that you want to create more space on. This box right here is a square or a rectangle, if you will, and I can make it smaller. Now, it looks like I lost my text, but the text is still there. I just need to remember to drag my text up. Now, look at all the, sp oops, look at all the space that I have for my text boxes. So if I see a banner on a theme that I really don't want it to be that big, I can change it. This is going to make more sense. I'm going to undo what I just did. It's going to make more sense when we add a slide. Um, I did add a slide, right? Um, the first slide, you can see kind of a little picture of it on the far right hand, whoops, far left hand corner. I have one slide and you might have more if you use last week's. Um, if you created a new one, then you're going to see just one as well, right? This, uh, this layout that I'm looking at right now, this master layout, this layout master, however you want to word it, uh, is being used by that slide. Again, if I want more real estate, I could change this graphic, okay? Or I could make it a different color. Remember we made our master slide? It, right now my master slide is kind of an off gray. I could select any of these image, uh, any of these text boxes or images that are on this slide and I can change it because the layout master has that quote unquote authority. All right. So I've selected and, and you're going to, you're gonna, this is going to blow your mind. There you go. So this entire box is actually a shape. Do you see how I'm moving it? Whoops. See how I'm moving it around? Right? I'm moving this around. Let's say I don't even want that. I don't even want that on there. I can delete it because I'm creating my own master. Let's say I want the, uh, I could make the font boxes look like that. I have changed this layout master. And if, I don't know if you've noticed, but way over here on the left-hand side, whatever I do to my layout master happens to the layouts that are using that layout master. That's confusing, isn't it? I don't know how else to say it. Okay. Um, I'm going to undo what I just did. I'm just hitting control Z. There we go. So I'm back to square one. Now you can see I'm back to square one and the slide that we've created or that I created at the beginning is now back to the way it was. So I can change these layouts. That's the main thing I want you to see. You're going to want to do this when you want quote unquote more real estate for your slides. You're going to want to do this when you want things to pop. So you want the, maybe a certain slide um, layout. You always want the text to be red, right? So don't go to each slide and make it red. Go to the layout and make it red and then it will pop. Okay. To give you an example, um, let's see this one right here. Okay. I want, I don't like this brown color. I want it to be white, just like this up here. So I haven't added that slide yet, but when I change it on the master, when I do add this slide, the text will be white. Maybe also, I don't like all this blank space over here. I want to be able to explain something. I want to, I'm on a text box in this big blank spot. So if you have a slide that has a big blank spot, you would hit the insert placeholder and text box or body text. There we go. And there is my body text. My title is upside down. Oh my God, <laughs> Laura, <laughs> you have discovered rotate. <laughs> All right. So if your text box is upside down, probably what you did is you um, selected, you were trying to move it and you hit a little one of the uh, squares and you were just trying to move it around, but you selected a square and then you see how my text is upside down. So what I said, if you see the rotate 
um, tool, which is it's a little circle above one of the squares, and I'm I'm guessing it's going to be at the bottom. All you need to do is grab the square at the top and drag it down and past that little button up at the top. Okay, or you can do it this way, which is a little easier. So here we have upside down text, yeah? So I'm gonna to go to arrange, I'm gonna to go to rotate, and I'm going to flip vertically. Boom! A few more steps, but you'll get the right answer every time. Okay. All right, so master slides. We have the master, we have the owner. So basically the owner chooses the background color, the uh, font that it thinks you should have and on the titles and on the body text. May I replicate the change on master to all or may I do separates as in PowerPoint? I don't quite understand that question, but I'm gonna try and answer it. So once you make a change to the master on the text or the background, it appears on all of the layouts, okay? Once you make a change on the, uh, the layout master, the ones underneath the master, then they will appear on all of the slides that you put in there. I think that answers your question. Um, if, um, oh, something that I pointed out earlier, I'm gonna click on this slide down here. The, again, with Google Themes, it usually has this percent um, slide master. I never use this. I've never used this and I never will use this, I don't think. So if I know I'm not gonna use this, I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna delete this. Here's the thing though, you cannot have any slides using this layout um, or it won't delete. Okay, so when you go to your slides, uh, your layout master, and if you have, a, if I, right up here it says editing paradigm, big number is the name of the slide. And right here it says used by zero slides. When it says that, I know I can delete this layout. Why do I want to delete layouts? Because I might want to add my own. Yes, you can do that. You can um, add a new slide within your slide master. You can import slides. You can, um, Barbara, you can use your own power, you can use your PowerPoint themes and you can import those in, okay? So um, lots of things you can do. This, these masters, just remember these masters are suggesting strongly that you do something a certain way. Oh, I just had a brain, um, okay. <laughs> Uh, let's let's pretend. Okay, I'm I'm I'm. Oh, I don't know if I should say this. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It's Monday. Okay, so let's say that the board of education has decided you must use uh, oxygen as your font. Okay, so they this is their recommendation, and it's highly strongly suggested that you use oxygen and aerial for your fonts, okay? And then your administrator says, you know, they suggest oxygen and aerial. Yeah, I kind of like that we are all using oxygen and Roboto. Okay, so we're going to use oxygen and Roboto. Again, this is a strong recommendation. Your administrator your, has suggested this, okay? Then you, when you get to your class, you create a slide and you go, you know, this oxygen font just isn't working for my students. I'm sorry, but I can't use it. So I'm just going to use, fill in the blank, your own font, okay? This is the board level, <laughs> the master, okay? When it's after all the layouts, after the word layout, that is your administrator's suggestion. Okay, and as soon as you're making changes to your masters, um, everyone look to the far right. Uh, you're going to see an X in the, uh, the, very, the dark bar going across your page. So you're going to click that, and this will get you out of Slides Master View. Okay, I'm going to click that, or there's always more than one way to skin a Google. I'm going to click on one of my slides that appear on the far left-hand left side. So let me show you what I did real quick. 
I'm in my master view. When I'm done doing what I want to do with my masters, my master slide or my layout masters, I am going to select this X. That will get me out. Or on the far left hand side, you're going to see all of your slides as you add them. You can click on any one of them and it'll go there. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to show you that third tier. We've done master. We've done layout master. Now let's look at the slide itself. All right. We're looking at the slide. Now I can't change any of the graphics, but on a slide master, um, on this one, I can't change any of the graphics. On others, I might be able to. The font though, here's what I was saying, oxygen, right? Now it's on the slide, the master slide has oxygen as the title font. The, um, the, the last, oops, the layout master also has oxygen as the font. But if I select this text box and I'm at the slide level, I can choose anything I want. I don't have to adhere to that master. There might be a reason for that. I might want this to stick out for some reason for my students. All of the other slides, I want it to stay as the master has said, okay? But on this one, I need it to pop. I need to add something. I need to do something to this. I need to change it. I don't wanna change my entire slide stack. I just wanna change this one slide. You can, just like that. Um, as you select, or when you select the slide, you see we have the option to change the layout as well. You should see layout up above the, uh, the what is that thing called, the ruler, right? So I can change to any one of these layouts I have here, or I can even change the theme on this particular slide, or I could add a different background color. Let's say that gray for this one, for whatever reason, I know my students better than my administrator, so I'm going to choose a gradient for the background. And there we go. Okay, this did not change my layouts. This did not change my layouts. It only changed the slide. Now that was a lot of information, little bitty space. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a page out of Elisa's book. Okay, add some breathing. And if anybody has any questions about the master slide, the layout master, or the slide being its own quote unquote master, please type that in the Q&A. Don't type in the chat. I can't see the chat. Um, cool, Barbara. Glad you got it. All right. Give us just a short count. Wow. You guys got it? Cool. Woohoo. <laughs> all right. So you're on the ball this Monday. Woo. Um, so that's, and again, this is all explained again. And John, I, I understand. I, I, I mean, you, you, I'm asking you for questions and you're like, I don't know, <laughs> right? So um, in this, the ebook that I gave you, here we go. Master, um, what is a master slide? So this is on, Stephen, understood, okay? So read the ebook. Okay, go to the ebook, um, look for the master slide in the table of contents. It's on uh, slide 40 and it explains it further. Okay, and I know some of us are visual learners. Some of us are, um, you got to see it in, in print. I, I get that. That's why I did this. That's why I have this here. So here's the master's map. That was the next slide. Okay, everything that I just went over, it's here in the ebook. All right. And here's how you access the deck master. All right, the next slide is how to manipulate the slide master. All right, or the layout master. All right. Melinda, so, can I interject you, just for a second? You betcha. 
So, I mean, just to kind of, for me as a teacher, how I interpret this is that because I use slides a lot with my classroom mm -hmm. I, and they all continually kind of look the same way. I have a preference to how I want them to look. So my title slide is always the same. The next slide is always the same, blah, blah, blah. So I made master slides so that every time I open up a new slides, I don't have to recreate that image that I want every time. I just go to the master and I select it and it's there. And then I type in my content or you know insert an image or whatever so the the template is already there for me i have created my own templates because i use the same thing over and over again so that would be the benefit of making master slides if you're just creating slides just to make something and you don't really care how they look then master is not going to be you know that important to you right and to piggyback on that um this slides deck that you're seeing here let me find a good layout boom uh this is I, I tried to make it look like a book so if everyone's looking at the slides my slides right now um again i tried to make this look like a book so on my master slide i added this line going down the vertical line i added some shadowing to uh just a box so it looked like a page um i have a uh, a gradient well a, a text up at the top right so that every time i i create a slide based on this image boom there it is this is not part of the um by the way this isn't penny this is melinda <laughs> but that's okay i answer to hey you too <laughs> uh, anyways so this this um this deck is actually i use this for slides i use this for docs and i use this for sheets i have each one of those is is its own ebook but all i do is duplicate the the um the slides deck and change the color so docs ebook is blue it's exactly the same uh the slides ebook is green it's exactly the same how do you get this ebook? You don't. You have to create your own. That's the beauty of slides. Um, I can definitely show you how to do that, Terry. I saw your question. I can definitely show you how to do it. Um, but come to one of the office hours, okay? And I will show you how to create one of those. Or maybe we can do that at the next um, slides uh, um, webinar, which will be next week on Tuesday, by the way. Okay? All right. So again, if you have questions, maybe this is just like way blowing your mind. Um, use the ebook. Okay, that's number one. And then number two would be to come to office hours. And we have uh, most of our OTAN staff. They know how to work with slides. I'll be there as well, so we can we can show you how to do it. You don't find the ebook. Okay, everyone, stop, 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 <laughs> stop asking about the ebook. Uh, if you come to the um, the office hours and ask, I will show you how, or since so many people have asked for it, we'll do it next time. Okay, and we actually might have time to do it today. I don't know, because we are going to be doing some, uh, some sh uh, shape work coming up here. Okay? All right. Boy, you guys are so excited. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to what we, we've done master slide, we've done layout slide. Now what I'd like to do, what was in my mind, was that we would all create a flashcard set together, okay? Um, and I think I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna do that with you. Uh, I'll add ebook to the list. If we get to it today, great. If we don't, we'll do it next week for sure. Uh, again, with office hours, if you come, I will try to show you that as well. All right, so creating a flashcard. We had a lot of interest in this last week, a lot of comments as well. So um, if you created a slides deck, great. Keep that tab open, you might wanna go back to it. All right, but what I'd like everyone to do now is up at the top of your screen, if you're using Chrome, I'm gonna walk you through it. If you're using some other browser, you're gonna have to figure it out. Sorry, um, up at the top of your screen, you should see a plus symbol and that's gonna open up a new tab. Okay, so I want you to open up a new tab in whatever browser you're using. Okay. So I'm using Chrome, so I'm going to get the Google coming up because that's my homepage. All right. So you've got a new tab open. 
all right? And then in your address bar, the place where you type the www whatever, um, the URL holder, the Omni bar, whatever you want to call it, I want you to type in the address bar or the Omni bar, I want you to type slides.google.com. I have to move this down so I can see. Here we go. Slides with an S dot Google dot com. So your new tab, when it opens, should look something similar to this. I'll give you a couple seconds. Your slides should look something like this. At the top of the page that opens, you're going to see the word template gallery. I want you to click that. Click the word template gallery. So we went to slides.google.com. Up at the top of the screen, to the right, you saw the word template gallery. You click it. I use the flashcards a lot, so that's why it appears at the up at the top of me. Up, up at the top of me. Up at the top of my template gallery. So you might have to scroll down a little bit. I want everyone to find flashcards. As you scroll down, you're going to see them within the education area. So here I've scrolled down. I see the word education. Okay. And on mine, I have flashcards. It's way over to the right. And it says flashcards. I'm going to click it. As soon as you click a template, it is yours. Now, you have to wait for the magic. Click it once. Don't click it two or three times because you're going to end up with two or three flashcards. Okay? So we're opening up a flashcards template. We can do whatever we want to this template. It is ours right now. It belongs to us. Okay? I don't want to create a Spanish quiz flashcards. I want to create a, um, what do I want to create? I don't know. Elisa, give me an idea. Jeez, I don't know. Come um, on, I'm putting you on the spot. How about English? Past, te past tense verbs. Past, past tense verbs. Okay, so here we go. So I have clicked where it says Spanish quiz. Now, you know, when you click around a lot, you're going to get, oh, look, all of these boxes, right? Just click where it says Spanish, double click where it says Spanish quiz. And we're not going to make this a quiz. We're going to make this past, whoops, where'd that J come from? Past tense verbs. By the way, um, slides does have spell check, but if you make a misspell and you don't, um, if you don't see this red underline, uh, your students will. <laughs> so make sure you, um, you spell the words correctly on the, on the, flash deck, right? Okay, now, remember we talked about uh, master slides, right? I don't like that I can't have these words go across the, the, the little card that they've created, right? Um, the words are kind of, they're being bound by the master, okay? I don't like that. I also don't like where I see Spanish 101 right here. Don't like that either. So I'm going to take those away. Now I could take it away just on this slide. I could do that. But then the next slide that I create that's based on this template or this master, I'm going to have to do all that work over again. So I'm going to go to the master now and I'm going to manipulate this. All right. So from here, remember, we can get to it two ways. We can go to View, Master, or we can go to Slide, Edit, Master. Okay, when you go to Slide, Edit, Master, it actually takes you to, wait. Oh, my God. <laughs> it changed it. Those sons of guns. Those, okay. Well, there went this tutorial. All right, okay, I'm going to delete out of this. Guess what? They didn't create this with a theme. They've gotten rid of their flashcard theme. They've just put all of these boxes.
boxes and everything on individual slides. So everything, yeah, Jennifer, it's supposed to. Um, unfortunately, what they did, this used to be a template. Okay, this used to be a master template. So what they've done is they've totally blown me out of the water. It's the joy of Google. All right, so that's okay. That's all right. We're going to back up. So we don't have a master. That's fine. That makes it a little easier um, because then I can just duplicate slides as I need them. This is the title slide. It's okay. Melinda's trying to backtrack a little bit and figure out what the heck she's going to do right now. So please um, bear with me here. I'm going to try and figure out what they did here. Okay, I guess used to be a template, I swear to you. All right, so everyone hit Control A. Control A, that's selecting everything on this slide. Okay, so you see how you've got the little boxes, they're kind of outlined blue. So you Control A selects everything. Now I want everyone to go to the Arrange menu, go up at the top of your screen, select Arrange. Yep, okay. And then there's a word called ungroup. Click it. Now it might not look like you did anything, but you did. Don't click off of anything. And if you did, it's okay. I want everyone to hit control A again. So hit control A again. So we're selecting everything on this slide again. We're gonna go to arrange. All right, if all you see is group, you're good at the bottom of this menu. If all you see is group, just leave it. Don't touch anything. If you see the word ungroup again, click it. Okay? All right, now. Yep. Now, <laughs> since we don't have a master, we're just gonna use the slide as a master. All right, so click in where you see, where I type past tense verbs, flashcards. All right, when I click inside there, if group is not highlighted, that's good. That's okay, Sandra. It's, we don't want, we want everything to be ungrouped. Okay, we want everything to be ungrouped. So select all, go to arrange, and then if you see ungroup, it's, it's bolded or it's able, it's clickable, then click it. If it's not clickable, you're good to go. You're fine. Now everyone click in your text box, past tense verbs, flashcards, or whatever you have there. The box is now there that I can drag it over and there I go. Okay, let me do that again. Okay. Go to a range. I don't remember saying that. Um, what I want you to do is select or click in the text box. Click in the text box. You should see the box, the handles for the box. Select the handle to the right and drag it. And now I can see that my text fix, fits in the box. All right, so it's not being forced to um, go to the next paragraph line. All right. All right, now everyone select where it says Spanish 101. And then this just for grins and giggles, let's just make this English. Or you can actually take out that entire box. You don't need it there. Okay. Now everyone select the light blue color. Do you like that? Is it okay? Do you wanna change it? It's not selecting. You need to click on it, Stephen. I, um, I don't know what you're trying to, collect, to select. So either if it's the text box, click in the text box. If it's not clicking, that means you haven't ungrouped. So control A, go to arrange and select ungroup. If it's highlighted, Okay. Um, the rest of you select the light blue, that's your banner up at the top, and you can change that color now. You can make it bright yellow, Whoa! blow your eyes out. Um, you know, you could go to a, any color that you want. If you like the light blue, then keep it. Okay. Um, there's another box at the bottom. Okay. Click it. You see how we've got handles all the way. This is a rectangle. It's going all the way across the page, right? It's taking up half the, uh, the page there. Delete it. Doesn't look like it did anything, does, does it? 
All right, but I have no idea why that was there, except that they were trying to make, I don't know, half and half here, which is silly because you really only need one rectangle, <laughs> okay? And we can, you can delete it if you wish, Stephen, or just put the word English. That's what I did. I just changed it. If you want to delete it, if you don't want that, um, that subtitle there, you can delete it. So it's up to you. Okay. All right. Now, if I wanted, this is my title slide, right? This is the first slide. I don't want to duplicate this. I don't want another title slide. So I'm going to go to the next slide. Now here is a quick tip. So it's try right clicking on an image and replace image to build your own flashcards. This is a really good tip. Leave this slide here. Do not change it. Don't get rid of it. This is going to be our, our, our go back to if we need the instruction. Okay. Now we're going to go to the third slide and it has a pink bar going across the top and it's got a, an image of a, um, a pineapple. All right. Now this flashcard set is called past tense verbs. <laughs> hmm. Um, 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 I'm going to change that. I'm going to go back to my title slide and I'm just going to put nouns to know. Sorry, Elisa, this works better for what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> All right. So I've changed my title slide. It's nouns okay. to know. I know. Rejection again. <laughs> All right. Uh, nouns to know. I'm going to go to the second slide. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to go to the third slide. Okay, now here we have a pineapple, right? And it's kind of grayish, which is good. Well, we're going to go to the fourth slide, la piña. This used to be a Spanish um, flashcard set, right? Well, it's not anymore. It's nouns to know. So this is a pineapple. So I type the word pineapple. Okay. You go to the next slide. It's got a green banner across the top. And it's giving me already the word la sila. La sila? However you pronounce it. It's a chair. Yeah? Here's a problem though. I need the first card to be without the word. Right? I need the first card to be kind of gray, like the pineapple was, not colored like this, right? So the easiest way to do this is not to create the whole darn thing again. The easiest way to do it is look on the left-hand side. You've got all of your slides listed down in a row, right? I'm going to select slide number five. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate slide. So I find the slide in the far left-hand side. Okay, I click it to make sure that it's selected. It's got a gold uh, highlight around it. I right-click that slide and I duplicate. Now I have two of the same slides. I have two of the same. The first one is the one I don't want the word. So I'm going to take that text box away. I also want this to be kind of a grayish color, this, this image that they have here. Now this image, I can tell by looking at it, I got a lot of handles here for some reason. That usually tells me that there's a grouping going on, that there's a, the, the image itself has been grouped with that uh, rectangle. There's a grouping here. And to make sure that I'm right, I click on the image. Not only do I see all the handles, that's, that's uh, red flag number one, but I'm gonna go to the arrange menu. Aha, and I see that the word ungroup is clickable. So I'm gonna click that, okay? Now when I select the chair itself, I don't have all those other handles, and I can do things to the, just the chair. Let me revisit that. Let me do that over again. First thing I did was, and this is the first slide. 
All right, so we, we've created two slides exactly the same. On the first slide, I'm taking away the text, La Sila, oops, La Sila. Oh my God, how did I group that? There we go. Taking that away, okay? Then I'm selecting the, the card, the image, and I'm going up to Arrange and Ungroup, okay? And then I'm selecting just the chair. So I've got the chair selected. I can see the handles on just the chair. I can see the rotation tool on just the chair. All right. Okay, so I have the chair selected. Now I'm gonna click on format options. When you have an image or in an object selected, you will have a format options menu. Click it. And then the menu items for format options appears on the right hand side. So select the image, click format options, and then all the format options appear off to the right. Remember, this is the first slide. I want it to be more transparent maybe, or I want it to be a grayish color. I don't want it to pop. Now this one, well, let's just do it. Okay, on this particular image, I'm given a recolor option that doesn't always appear for text boxes and stuff. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, live with it. <laughs> All right, so I've selected the image. Okay, Sandra, you have to select an image in order to see format options. So click on the chair if you're on the same slide, okay? Whatever slide you're on, select an image, and then you will see format options up at the very top above the, the ruler if your ruler's open. Okay, it's just two words, format options. And then it will open off up on the right-hand side. All right, I've got my chair selected. I'm gonna hit the recolor option. Now, it looks like there's nothing here, but what it's doing is it's telling you that there's no recolor on this chair. So click that, click the arrows, okay? And instead of no recolor, we're going to choose a whitish one Ooh, that wasn't good. <laughs> How about a, a tannish one? Mm, yeah, not so good. So you have lots of options here. All right. So you've got lots of options to recolor images. Okay. Make sense? So far, so good. I've just made it different. I wanted it to be different than the answer card that's coming up. So I don't have any text. I have an image of a chair. All right, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. And instead of this, I'm going to type chair. All right. Make sense? Okay, and I want everyone to do their own on the car, the auto, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, but, um, and. Again, let's keep with the theme of, of nouns to know. So whatever you want to call this auto or car, make sure you change the text for el coche. I don't speak Spanish, so I apologize. <laughs> we were just discussing this before you guys came in the room. Ich spreche Deutsch. Das ist ein Auto. Okay. <laughs> so change these slides. Um, something to think about for those of you that are more advanced. Um, if you select on the auto, or I'm going to go back to the chair, actually. On the chair, it has that green banner going across. I like things to pop for students. So on the slide where I'm asking them a question, maybe I don't want this to be a greenish color. Maybe I want it to be gray. And then when they get the answer, boom, then I have the green. The same thing with the pineapple. Maybe the banner at the top where I'm just asking them, what is this? I make it gray. And then when they get the answer, boom, it's pink. Or maybe for a pineapple, you know, pineapple shouldn't be pink. That's usually that they're, uh, they're, they're getting to be wine. So I make it yellow. All right, so you can make the banners a different size or maybe even to denote this when it's gray is me asking you a question when it's yellow, I'm giving you an answer. All right. All right. By now, everyone should have changed the slides for the flashcards. This is just an idea of what you can do. 
Okay, now the next slide deck, they're giving you a different um, variation of slide cards. They're giving the, the English word, now remember this was Spanish, and then they're giving you the, uh, the Spanish word. So you could do something similar. You know, it doesn't have to be an image. Maybe for beginning ESL students, you would want something like this. Uh, but we could also make this, I mean, you can make it anything. You can make it math. You can make a science. Uh, science. That's a good one. What is this? Anybody? Come on, type it in the Q&A. If you know what that is, you get a prize. I don't know what it is, but you'll get one. How about a free pass to the uh, next webinar coming up? Iron, Dominica, there you go. <laughs> yes, so the answer would be iron. Okay, maybe I even put the symbol or the uh, down there. Okay, and since this is iron, we don't want it to be blue. We want it to be the background or the banner to be a dark red, right? Because it's iron. All right, now, um, uh, Stephen, um, no, because I was talking Spanish um, science. <laughs> okay, so again, you can do anything you want to a template. It becomes yours. And these boxes at the bottom are driving me nuts. All right. So that's a way to make a flashcard. Now, I did want to show you, remember, way up at the top here, everyone go to slide number two if you've been following along. It says, quick tip, try clicking on a photo and using replace image. So if I don't want to do pineapple, I want my own um, images here, right? You have to follow the procedure that I'm going to show you. I, I'll show you that in a minute, Stephen. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click on everyone go up to your pineapple that sounds kind of weird but go up to your pineapple slide three and select your pineapple okay you can tell you've got it selected because it's got handles all around it all right and by the way the gray pineapple if you've been following along so i've got the gray banner at the top i've selected the pineapple now i'm going to go to arrange and i'm going to ungroup Okay, so you select your pineapple, you go to arrange, you go to ungroup. If you go to arrange and you get this gray, it's group is gray and grayed out and ungroup is grayed out, you're good, you're fine. So click on your pineapple again, okay? Right click on it, right click on the image. And then in this menu that comes up, you're gonna have to scroll down a little bit, you can replace the image. You can replace the image by going to your drive, by going to photos, uh, your Google photos, by a URL. If you have, um, if you've gotten the URL from maybe uh, Creative Commons or something, you could do that. Or if you have a camera, if you're using a device with a camera and you wanna take a picture of the TV in front of you, you could do that with your tablet, right? Um, I'm gonna use photos. Okay, here's a bunch of photos that I've taken. Um, there we go. I'm going to insert one or um, um, when you click an image, you're given the option not to insert, but to replace. And what that does is it puts it in the exact same aspect ratio, the exact same aspect ratio. Okay. So let me go over that again. You've selected the pineapple or the image. You've right clicked on it. You're going to go to replace image. You're going to either select from your drive, your photos, your, or even upload from your computer. So let me do that. I'll upload from my computer. I got to wait for the magic because right now, when I, now I have to find an image. Um, here we go. When I select from my computer, I'm going to hit open and the aspect ratio stays the same. So I don't have to resize the image, okay? Sandra, in order to see anything on your right click, um, you need to make sure that you're, number one, that you're not grouped, okay? So click on, maybe it's the pineapple, maybe it's the chair, whatever you're doing, click on the image, go to arrange. If you see ungroup as an option to select, then select it, okay? Then when you right click on the image, you will see replace image, 
Okay, and it's, it's down a ways. If you don't see it, it might be that you've got your slides deck um, a little too big on the screen, so you might have to resize it a little bit because this is a long menu. This is a long menu. All right, so lots of ways to change the image. And like I said, it, it replaces exactly the same aspect ratio, the same size. You don't have to do any resizing. It's really cool. Yeah? Okay, I went to my photos. Um, there are lots of photos here. Here we go. We can take this one and you hit replace. Um, now this image, it got cut off. I selected this one. <laughs> I forgot what this said. I selected this one because I knew it had words on it. And now here is the problem. Um, when you replace an image, if you have an image that is actually bigger, oops, um, see it's cutting off some of the words here. So there might be some instances where you don't want to replace, all right? Or maybe it's making it too small, right? So what Google's doing is it's cropping it. It's masking it. We went over this last week. When you double click on it, you'll see the whole image so that you can move things over a little bit or you can mask it a different way if you want. Okay, so you know it's been a good day when you didn't have to unleash the flying monkeys, right? That's a good day. <laughs> That's pretty safe, isn't it? Um, so this is how you can create your own images using this quote unquote template. This really isn't a template anymore. They kind of threw me for a loop because usually all of these layouts would have had the cards um, and places to put the image and everything. I don't know why they took that away. They kept the slides deck there though, so that's good. So this is a really good sample for you to use for your own flashcards if you want to create them for the students. Um, now, up at the top, we had the question about the banner. How do I change the banner up at the top? You have to select it. Okay, so I'm going to click on this gray banner up at the top. And then there's a paint bucket that looks like it's got the fill color of gray. It's very faint, but I can tell that there's a color there. I'm going to click on the paint bucket and choose another color. And remember, last week we also, and now I can also see when the images or the the shape is selected. Uh, you can see that it's orange. And remember last week, we also discussed gradient. So maybe I want that banner to be gradient to make it pop a little more, for whatever reason, it makes it a little more jazzy. Okay. All right. Flashcards, really cool way to get information to your students. Um, again, this is uh, how to share this. You can share it with your students individually by using the share button or go ahead and hit that share button and you will see that it opens up to restricted down at the bottom. So cl everyone click share. Let me back out of here. Everyone click share on this slide set. Right now it says private only to you or only to me. Okay, and when the share opens, you're gonna see at the bottom, get link. And it says restricted, only people added can open with the link. So what that means is you have to add people up here. Don't do it. What this permissions is saying, you would have to add people up here, then you would send them the link and only those people could see it. Well, that's a lot of work. Don't do that. Don't do that. So what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the link underneath it that says change to anyone. Change to anyone with this link. Okay, click that. And now you'll see where it says anyone with the link can open and view, make sure view is selected right above the done button. Because if you have it as editor, your slides are going to get screwed up because your students or, or whoever gets this link is going to go in and make changes. So don't allow people to edit your flashcards. All right, make sure it's viewer. Um, anyone with the link? Now here's another little tip. Uh, we're going to have to hit done and then we're going to come back. All right, so everyone select done. Anyone with the link? Now go back to your share button. It says anyone on the internet with this link can view. Guess what else they can do? They can make a copy. 
They can make a copy. Yes, yeah, Stephen, because you're on a, a club. So you would still select that, change the link, and then you can make additional changes to it unless LAUSD is preventing you from sharing from anybody outside LAUSD. I have no control over that. Um, but select that setting, the change. So somewhere in here, you should see something that says um, uh, more settings. Okay. Now I have to get done again. All right, so share. I'm going to go to share. Everyone go to share <laughs> after you shared your link. Okay? Everyone who has made their link to uh, be anyone on the internet with this link can view. that has this setting right here. I want you all to go to the gear in the top right-hand corner. If you don't see it, if you see something like this, then click where it says share with people in groups. Okay? So I want you to see this gear. When you see that gear, I want you to click it. And then look at the settings. These are additional settings that you have on every Google document, sheet, or slide. Anything that you can share in Google, you have these additional settings. So do I want my editors to be able to change permissions and share? Sure. Or maybe not. I don't know. You select that. If you're not sharing it with anybody as an editor, Take it away, <laughs> okay? All right. Um, viewers and commenters can see the option to download, print, and copy. Do you want your students, after they get this slide deck, after they get these flashcards, do you want them to be able to make a copy? If the answer is yes, leave this. If the answer is no, you just want them to see it, then you take that away. That means that when you give them the link, I'm going to copy the link. When you give them the link to open up this flashcard deck, they can see it, they can go backwards, they can go forwards, they can do anything as far as viewing is concerned, but they cannot copy it. So again, that's entirely up to you. That's basically what I did. I added a little more a roundabout way of doing it um, when I did the ebook. So this ebook, when you actually open it up, let me get rid of this slide. When you open it up to this, you will not see anything that says copy. Okay. What about editors can change permission and share? Stephen, that's totally up to you. If you give anybody edit rights to your slide stack and you want them to be able to change permissions, then, then leave it selected. It's up to you. If you don't add it editors, there's no reason to have that there. So I usually deselect it. There's no point in having it there. Um, it's also kind of a safety valve a little bit. So if anybody does get to the deck um, as an editor that I don't know about, it's never happened. But if it did, um, they wouldn't be able to make any changes to it. Okay. Alrighty. Um, 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 oh, we got a half an hour. Okay. Uh, something that was added. I hit the back hour and lost a flashcard deck. How do I get back to it? Okay. That's a good question, actually. Actually, all the questions are good, but that's especially good because, um, well, let's just do this. Let me show you something here. I'm going to put flashcards too, because I already have a flashcard. So, and then I'm going around. <gasps> I closed it. I didn't mean to. How do I get it back? Right? All right. There's a couple of things you can do. Um, shout out to Marjorie Olavides. She showed this to me. If you're using Chrome, you could control shift T and it will open up the slide deck <laughs> or the actually the last tab that you had opened. So control shift T that might work for you. If it doesn't, don't stress because remember Google saves, Google saves. It's already done, it's already there, it's ready to rock and roll. All you have to do is open up a new tab, go to slides.google.com, any which way you want. You can go, you can type it in slides.google.com or you can use the waffle and go to slides. Either way, you're gonna get the same place and bada bing, bada boom, here is my flashcards right here. So you never lose anything with Google, it saves, okay? Um, it even saves, look at this. I did not title a presentation. 
untitled presentation. I went in there to do something. I'll have to open up later and figure out what it was, uh, but I didn't title my presentation. So it even saves those. Okay, so you never lose anything from Google. Don't worry about it. Something that I added to the ebook is a link. Uh, moving on. Um, so go to uh, open a slide deck, not your flashcards not your flashcards, open a slides deck that's new or the one that you've already um, created today, OTAN demo, if you have that, whichever. Open up a, a slides deck to where you can get to a blank uh, page. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna screw up your flashcards. Uh, something that I added to this slides deck, I have to scroll down to find it, here we go. So on the slides, the ebook the e that I created, you, I gave you all these shapes. I didn't give them to you, I, I'm showing them to you. The shapes are in the shape tool. So we have the general shapes is right here, right? And these mirror that uh, selection. Okay, when you go to the flow chart diagram area, those are at the bottom of the general shapes. So right here, these are all the flow chart diagram, okay? Next one would be the arrows. Here are all the arrows. I just made them bigger so that you could see them. Okay, and I, here we go. I forgot to share this with you. <laughs> you can, using this link right here, let me make it bigger so you can all see it. Is that big enough? That should be big enough, yeah? Uh, bit.ly slash shapes, the number two, share. If you open that, you will see something similar to, oops, this, okay? And you will be able to make a copy. So you'll see this, here's the link again, Google Shapes. This is actually a slide deck that I'm, I'm, I'm letting you copy, okay? Uh, so you go to file, make a copy, you want the entire presentation, and in here are some bonus images. Um, if you're following along, please make a copy. Do not do anything to the slides on this deck. Okay, I see a bunch of you coming in. Anonymous uh, Narwhal and, and good Lord, I don't even know what that was. Beaver, <laughs> elephant. All right, so you're all coming in. That's good. So go to file, make a copy. Do not make any changes on this slides deck. Steven, I can't see the chat. So you're gonna to have to type bit.ly slash shapes, the number two, share. Unless Elisa or, or uh, Marjorie can, can put that in the slide deck for you. I can't see it, so I can't type it in for you. Sorry, I tried to, but the one I typed in was wrong. So I'm oh. again. sorry, hold on. Alrighty. So here we, and I see we've got, what, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 people coming in. So make a copy, go to file, make a copy. Okay, and then once you have your own copy made, I want you just to go to, um, hmm, click in between slide three and four, you'll see a little gold line go in between it. When you make your own copy, click between slides two and three, you'll see a gold line and then I want you to insert a new slide, a blank slide. Okay, so you can do that a couple of ways. I'm gonna undo. I've selected, I've clicked my cursor between slides two and three. I'm going to right click, right click, and then just new slide. That's the easiest way to do it. Let me do that one more time. Make a copy of the slide deck by going to File, Make a Copy, Entire Presentation. Once you've done that, click your, your cursor between slides two and three, right click right on that little gold line that's going across, and you'll see options. You're going to do, oops, you're going to new slide. You're gonna create a new slide, okay? So you have a blank slide here now. You have on your own. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but I really don't change the slides deck, man. All right. 
Um, so now we have a blank deck. Okay, now if you're following along, you've, you've gone to file, make a copy, entire presentation. You've created a blank slide in between two and three. So now you have number two has shapes, number three is blank, and number four is flowchart diagram, right? How did I get number three there? I right clicked in between two and three and I selected new slide. All right, everyone go to the second slide, shapes, and I want you to select the one um, that I'm selecting. Well, no, tell you what, we'll make this easier. So select the pie, select the pie. We did this last week. Select the pie. You see it? Kind of looks like a little Pac-Man in a way. Now copy it. Control C. You've selected it and you've copied it. Control C. Now go back to slide three where it's blank and watch this magic. Watch this on your own slide deck. You're going to paste. You're going to control V and that pie is going to go exactly in the same exact position as it was on slide two. That's exactly where it was. That is magic and that will help you when you're creating a slides deck and you've got a little box called TOC that is on every single slide. You copy it once. And then you just go down your slides deck and go paste, 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 paste. And it will be put in exactly the same position as it was when you copied it. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to make this pie. I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to drag it off somewhere and I'm going to make it bigger just by selecting one of the handles and dragging it down. Everyone do that. Uh, it says TOC on, the, on my ebook, Jennifer. It doesn't say it here. All right. This is a totally different slides deck. This is your own. You can do whatever you want with it. If you want a little box that says TOC, go for it. Okay. But I was referring to this because that's what I did. I selected this TOC. If you're looking at the Zoom window, I selected this box that says TOC on it. I made it a link and then I copied it on every single slide. Okay. All right, now I'm back on the shapes slide deck. Um, when you have gold handles that appear on a slide, you can uh, hover over that gold handle. And when you see the crosshairs, when you see that it looks like a plus sign, you can do something with that gold handle. So you can make this anything you want, okay? Um, you know, you don't want it to be one quarter, you want it to be one sixteenth. If that's 1 16th, you could do that by using those gold handles on this particular shape. All right, now I'm going to go back to slide two and I'm going to select another shape. Um, and I'm just going to select one. That, oh, there's a gold handle. So I'm going to select one that has a gold handle on it. All right, so you go back to slides two, slide deck two or slide layout two. All right, select a, an image that has some gold handles. Not all of them do. This circle has no gold handles. Triangle, oh, that's got one. Um, this next triangle does not. I'll, I'll, Sandra, in one second, I'll, I'll show you that. There's magic coming up. So I'm gonna select a, um, an image that has a gold handle, okay? It doesn't matter what you, what you select. I'm gonna hit copy, control C after I've selected it. And then I'm going to go back to my slide three, my demo slide. Right? And I'm going to paste. It goes into the exact same spot as it was on slide two. Woohoo! I'm going to, here's the magic, Sandra. Listen up. I'm going to make this bigger and I'm going to keep the aspect ratio by holding down my shift key. So the little box, the little squares that, that appear off to the side of the image, those are my handles. I'm going to select one of those handles while I hold down the shift key on my keyboard and I'm going to drag this down and I make the image bigger and it's in the exact same, it keeps its aspect ratio. If I don't do that, I'm not holding the shift key down. See what happens to the image? That might be okay. I might want it like that. 
there are going to be times when you want your image not to keep aspect ratio. Okay. Now this has a gold handle. What does this one do? Mm. That looks pretty cool. Okay. Maybe I use that for photographs or look at that. It becomes a diamond kind of. It's got flat lines on it. So the images that have gold handles that you can do a lot with them and you're going to want to. All right. Why are you going to want to? Well, <laughs> everyone on your own slides deck, scroll all the way down to the very last slide. This is one of those bonus images you're going to get. This is one of those bonus images. So on this last slide, you see what? Anybody in the Q&A? What is this image here? It's a keyboard, yes. Now, why would you want a keyboard? Ah, uh, well, every shape that you create, you can type in it. Ooh, you can type in it. So on your own, I'm gonna do it on mine. This is mine, only I can touch it. On your own, I want you to double click where you know the space bar is at. Just double click. You're gonna get a blinking cursor. Okay, and then type space bar. I think it's one word though, isn't it? So if you're trying to teach your students how to use a computer, how to use a keyboard, you might want to type space bar right there. Yeah, if you double click where you know the letter A is, you might want to type that in for people. But, ooh, look at that. It kind of bounces out a little bit, right? So I might want to change the font size or I could change the format options. So I need everyone to look. Don't try and follow along, please. Look at what I'm doing first, okay? Come on, put your mouses down. I have everyone's attention. We're running out of time, so pay attention. Okay, here we go. I'm going to select where I just typed that letter A. I'm going to select that box. It's actually a box. Okay, it's a shape. And you can type in shape. So I've selected it. And now don't follow along. I'm going to click on format options. And when I select a box or a shape, Google knows that I'm able to type text in it. So it gives me the option to text fitting. So I'm going to select that. I get a drop down. And here's what I want to change right here, the padding. So all boxes, all text boxes, anything that has text has padding. It has what's called a white space around it. And that keeps the, uh, the text from touching one another, or it keeps the boxes from touching one another. Steven, it's the last slide on the shapes that um, you should be making a copy of or already made a copy of. So it's the very last slide. So I've selected the letter A. Okay, it's already got the letter A in there because I typed it in. Now I'm going to take away the padding. I'm going to make all the padding zero. And when I do that, now I can take this shape and I can make it center aligned. Boom, there's my A right in the middle where I want it. No padding anywhere around. And here's the other thing that you can do with this image. You can, if you want to tell somebody to hit control, shift, but we always tell people that, right? Control, shift, delete, or control, shift again. What you do is you select the, um, the I'm, I'm gonna repeat, I'm gonna repeat, <laughs> Jennifer and Steven, I'm gonna repeat. But you select the tech or the box, right? You select the shape. And then you can make it a different color. This is the power of making your own images. When you can, you can point things out to people. Try to do this on any other keyboard. I, I, I dare you. You're not going to be able to do it. Uh, was it control? Should we, let's say delete. All right. And you know your keyboards better than I do. And maybe you don't have as many keys on your keyboard. Right? Maybe you need to take away the number pad. You can do that. Watch. It's real easy. I'm going to select all those, right? I'm just selecting the keypad. 
boom, it's gone. All right, now I'm going to undo that because some people might need it. All right, so, but you can make changes. Now, how did I do this? All right, I want everyone to select the shape next to where the letter A would be, and that would actually represent the S, right? S is in Sam. All right, so select what you think would be the S key on this keyboard on your own slides deck and type the letter S. Make it uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't matter. Okay, now select the box that has the letter S in it. All right, to get that letter S in it, what you did was you selected the box and then you just type the letter. All right, all right, now select the S and when you do that, you're going to see format options appear up at the top of your screen or up at the top of your menu. All right, it's going to be above the slides. It's going to appear in different places for different people. So I can't really describe where it's at. It's at the far right, um, probably next to your text direction, which looks like a paragraph. All right, format options, select that and you should see a pane, a panel appear to the right hand side. Okay, and it's got a bunch of options here. We've got size and rotation, we've got position. Text fitting is what we want. So you're gonna select text fitting. And down in this text fitting area, you're gonna see padding. We wanna take away all of the padding. So you're gonna select the arrow down and that'll make it zero, or you could just type the word or the letter zero, the letter or the number zero. Okay, just click where it says point one and put a zero. All right, now, now the S has no padding around it. All shapes are left aligned unless you make them center aligned, justified, whatever you need. But all shapes are by default left aligned. So select the S shape, select that box that has a letter S in it, go up to your alignment tool. It's next to the comment tool or the line spacing. It's right in between those two. Okay. There's an arrow next to your align tool, select it. And then you'll see center justifies where all the lines are evenly spaced in the middle. Click. Now the S is aligned to center. All right. Why on mine, I went ahead and added the letter D as well. Why is mine all the way to the right? Because of the padding and because it's left aligned. Okay. All right. Now, um, and again, you know, you might want to put the letters in. You might not. Uh, it might be just something visual for your students. You want to show them, oops, you want to show them where control uh, the control key is or the space bar key or whatever. Okay. And I've just messed that up. There we go. To center align, I'm going to center align my space bar. I'm going to select the shape. Stephen, pay attention. Select the shape. Okay. You're going to go up to the top of your, your, um, on your menu. Okay, and you should see the alignment tool. The alignment tool, it has a little uh, arrow next to it. When you hover over it, you'll see the word align. And that's when you know you have the align tool. So select the arrow next to your align tool. And then there's a bunch of options here. We've got left align, center align, right align, and justify. Center align is the one that says center when you're hovering over it. And all of the lines are centered together down the middle. When you click that, then the word or the letter or the number or whatever you typed in the shape will be centered aligned. Okay, so how now here's the thing. How do you get this into a PowerPoint? Barbara, you can do that because I know you use PowerPoint because you asked the question. 
this is going to be the last thing I show you folks. I have a, um, and I'm not going to show you how to do this, so please don't ask. I will show you how to do part of what I'm doing next week. Okay? I'll show part of what I'm doing next week. If I wanted, let's say I'm going to take this out here. I'm just going to, maybe I've got a student or a, um, a presentation and I'm, yeah, I'm using PowerPoint or I'm using a Google site and I need an image to show everybody where the space bar is. So I just want to show them where it is. I don't want to, um, to name it. I just want to show them. Okay. I am going to select the entire keyboard. I've got the entire keyboard selected. I'm going to copy it. Okay. I am going to open up a drawings. So drawings, remember, I'm not going to go over this again. I'll show you next week. Drawings.google.com. Drawings with an S.google.com. And that opens up a new drawing for me. Okay. I'm going to... Now paste, there's my keyboard. I'm going to make this keyboard be the only thing on this canvas. Um, there we go, I'm making my canvas a little smaller. There we go. Once you get your image on your drawings, what you do from there is go to file, download as, a JPEG or a ping. I'm going to download this as a ping, a PNG file. A PNG file just means that all the white area that looks white on my image will actually be clear. I'm going to name this keyboard. It's going to go to my desktop. And a minute, no, it's going to, there it is. So here's my ping. Now I can open up anything like a uh, Oh, yeah, email, mail.google.com. I can open up a, a new message in Google because maybe it's just one student that's having a problem. You know, she's trying really hard, but oh, man, she's just not getting it. So I'm going to show her exactly where that, come on, come on, there we go. I'm gonna show exactly where that control key is I created it in Google Draw. I downloaded it, sorry, downloaded it onto my desktop as a ping. I'm going to add it to this message. There it is. Now I can send it to the student who needs it the most. <laughs> okay. And all it is is an image. That's all it is. It's nothing that they have to save. It's nothing that they have to go to. But you can create pings. And Barbara, in much the same way, you can take that ping and you can put it in any uh, PowerPoint or Word file, anything you want. Can all shapes on the keyboard be selected and aligned at once? Ooh, kind of. Uh, yeah, you can do alignment. And we're going to be going over shapes more next week. So we're actually going to be getting not more into slides so much, but how to create things in slides like um, a postcard. Okay, you can create a postcard using slides and drawings. You make the drawing, you make a ping, you stick it in the, the slides, bada bing, bada boom, you got a good thing. Where can you find the ping? You have to create it, Laura. So what I did was I copied the keyboard. Okay, I went to drawings.google.com. I opened, that opens up a new drawing, okay? Uh, once the drawing is open, then I paste the keyboard. Once I paste the keyboard, again, this is a drawing, so I know I can make any changes that I wanted, like maybe I copied this from slides and, oh, I forgot to uh, make this one red as well, this shape red, because I want them to know where the enter key is, okay? Or whatever that key is, all right? so. I do that. I make any changes that I want. Um, in answer to somebody else's question here, uh, let's maybe that one is unaligned. So I would select, oops, I would select the uh, all those little shapes there. 
and I would align them by arrangement. Remember, I'm not going to show you. Okay, we'll go over this next week. So once I've made this image the way I want it, then I go to File, Download, PNG, or JPEG. JPEG means all the white will be a solid white on the image. PNG means all of the white in the background becomes clear. So this white area right here where I'm hovering my mouse up and down, um, that would be white if it was a JPEG. It will be clear if it's a ping. We are going to go over more on shapes next go around. So if you, um, I'm pretty sure that's going to be next Wednesday. I'm looking at the calendar. It'll be on the calendar soon. Okay, it'll be on the OTAN calendar soon. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be next week, but I'm not 100%. So keep checking that OTAN calendar. All right, and on that note, I'm going to make sure that everyone's got this ebook. Okay, so for the ebook, here's the um, here's the URL. Uh, so we've got Bitly slides to view or slides to V, I should say. In my mind, this is slides to view. All right, that's this ebook. So make sure you have that link. Um, also, and it's on this handout, folks. So you don't have to remember. Well, what are the shapes? I want the shapes. It's it's here. The link is here. I'm scrolling down real quick. Hang on, it's going to be right on slide 38. So, and I'll make that a link right now for you. So you don't even have to type anything. Boom, there we go. Okay. All right, so that's all I got. I know we covered a lot. Um, I, main, I mainly wanted you to, to, uh, to understand master slides and layout slides. A uh, little bit about drawing. That was a kind of a lead into drawings because that, that's what we're going to uh, do a lot more on next week. Okay, how to create your own drawings, how to create pings, how to create um, alt text for your images when you use slides and um, some other stuff as well.